and welcome to another episode of Fubar. In today's video, we are going to talk about event source mapping, more specifically when it happens between Lambda and Kinesis data streams. Event source mapping is a resource that will read the records from the stream and invoke the Lambda functions accordingly. It comes with a lot of features in a previous video we have briefly introduced some of them i want to deep dive on some of the features because it might help you a lot so let's get started event source mapping fetch records from the shards of the stream in batches and send them to the lambda function in this process event source mapping takes care of handling the batch size error handling filtering events and much more we already talked about the batch size and batch windows that are variables that you can control when working with event source mapping. And this will uh, influence how fast you're going to invoke your function. The bigger the batch or the longer the time that you're waiting, the more the event source mapping will wait to invoke the function. But there is many more characteristics that we can look at. Let's start looking about filtering. Filtering is something super handy when you're working with event source mapping because this means that not all the records are going to trigger all the functions. So in our architecture that we have been working, we have pipes that do filtering to forward the records. But if you want to invoke different functions using records that are coming from a Kinesis data stream, you can do this filtering directly from the event source mapping. For every uh, event source mapping, you can define five filters. And if the record satisfies one or more of these filters, it will get sent to the function. So the filter looks something like this. You can define filters, and these are like representations of JSON when you define the event source mapping. And these filters work very similar to the ones that we have seen with pipes and other filters in AWS. So here we can see a filter where metadata one either matches that rule and that data matches that rule. So something very simple, but we can do more complex filter. So you can see the documentation on how event source mapping do the filter. Another configuration that you might be interested in setting up is the maximum record age. This is very useful when working with data that need to be consumed fresh. So if the data is older than this parameter, then the data is discarded and not sent to the function. In this way, you are not processing data that maybe it's not relevant anymore. If you need to do aggregation of data as your data is streamed, you can use the tumbling window configuration. This is the fixed size or non-overlapping time intervals, and you can define it up to 15 minutes. When you apply a tumbling window to a stream, the records in the stream are grouped by this window and sent to the processing Lambda function. The function returns a state value that is passed to the next invocation of the tumbling window to get, for example, the final aggregate at the end of the window. So let's see it in action in this diagram. You can see here an incoming record to the function. The incoming record batch contains the window start and end, the state of the window, and if the record is the final one. When the function finalizes processing, the batch of records is at to the state of the aggregation. The next batch of records in the windows will receive the state that the previous function process and it can modify it and return it as a new state to the next set or to the last set in this case. Finally, the last function that executes in this window will receive the state and store the aggregation result in, for example, S3, so you can do something with it later or trigger something else. And in this way, you can do aggregations on the fly, very useful form when you need to do this and you don't need to rethink all your application. Another really interesting feature is the parallelization factor. This is really useful for high traffic when you need to increase the amount of records being processed at the same time, but when you don't want to scale the amount of shards in your system. So you can increment the parallelization factor. 
By default, when you're working with event source mapping, one lambda will process one shard. But if you add more to this parallelization factor, now you can increase the amount of functions that will be handling each individual shard. When working with the parallelization factor, you need to define how many batches to process concurrently with each charge. The default is one, as I said before, but you can get up to 10. For example, a factor of two allows you to have a Kinesis data stream with 100 shards to have 200 concurrent Lambda invocations. And the last bit I want to talk is error handling. Event source mapping provides a lot of characteristics for error handling when it comes to handler errors of events that cannot be processed or records that cannot be processed. The first one I want to mention is the maximum retry attempts. And these parameters allows you to specify how many retries event source mapping will do over the record before discarding it. Another interesting failure handling characteristic is the capability of event source mapping to the checkpoint of records that have been successfully processed. That's one of the kind of trade-offs that you need to do when you think of the batch size, when record in that batch fails, then the whole batch needs to be reprocessed. When you're working with checkpoints, event source mapping will do a checkpoint in some point of the batch. And if there is a failure after the checkpoint, you only need to reprocess that bit that fails. So you will process half of the batch or one third of the batch, making these the chances of having bigger batches of records more useful and also not to have to reprocess a lot of data over and over again, maybe 100 of those records are fine and it's only one that is the problematic and you don't want to do that. So to enable checkpointing, you need to use the attribute function response time and set it to report batch item failure in this way, then it will be enabling checkpoint. Another interesting feature is the bisect batch on function error. And this attribute allows you to configure if you want to split the batch in half, if there is one error, so you split the batch in half and then there is an error. And if there is an error in the first half, it will get retried the first half, if there is an error in the second half. And then as soon as the batch gets retried and reprocessed, if there is some kind of record that is impossible to process, the batch size will get smaller and smaller for this particular case. In this way, you don't need to alter the original batch size to handle these errors. And this is way simpler than the previous configuration. One very important thing that you might enable always when you're working with anything that can fail <laughs> is a dead letter Q. And in this case, it's the destination configuration. If you want to have more control or where your discarded records go, you can set up a destination configuration. This can be a, a queue or a topic in where Lambda will send all the discarded batch of records that are too old or have exhausted all the retries. And then you can reprocess them or analyze them to understand what happened, why those records cannot be processed. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. I will leave you a lot of links in the description with more details in each of these particular characteristics so you can go deeper and you can understand which ones can be useful for you. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And here you can see the first uh, video where I'm going to create a Lambda function using the event source mapping using CDK and in this other video you can see the playlist about Kinesis that we are working now. And that's it, I see you in another episode of Uba. Ciao, ciao!